Hey guys, what's going on? Chris from Madass Gamers here with a SimCity tips and tricks guide. If you do go on to enjoy this video and do find it helpful, be sure to smash that like button and leave your comments in the comment section below on your thoughts of SimCity. So let's get into it. The first thing you're always going to want to do when starting a new city is check the wind direction for the best place to zone your industrial factories. Factories will create a lot of air pollution, so you won't want the pollution blowing over onto your commercial and residential homes, because that won't make your sims too happy and it can make them quite sick as well. So as you can see here, the wind is flowing in that direction, so a good place to zone our industrial factory so it doesn't blow onto our homes is over in this section here. Keep your water supply away from your dirty factory so it doesn't get polluted. Also check the density of the water in the ground before placing a tower. You want to put it in the most dense areas possible. Decide what power source you're going to use to power your city, whether it's a coal factory or a solar farm. Before you do so though, be sure to check the data map for how much mineral is actually available in the ground. For example, if you want to do a starter coal factory, make sure there's actually coal in the ground before you do so. Also another tip if you do do a coal factory or any other sort of factory, make sure you set it to accept deliveries from global market as you can see here. This will help prevent your factory from running out of um, the mineral uh, it needs to generate the power. Always be sure to use the road guides when creating roads, it'll help you maximize the density of your city along those certain roads. Zoning large areas can be a bit of a pain, but if you hold control when zoning, it'll allow you to zone areas quicker and more efficient. When zoning, you'll also notice this line on the right here. This line shows the size of the building once it's at its max density. So this is how big the building will be once it's completely built. Sims will only spend money at shops in commercial areas if they drive past it. A good place to zone shops are along main roads or even between industrial and residential areas. So Sims drive past the commercial areas, the shops, on the way to and from work. Keep sewage plants as far away from Sims as possible, both commercial and residential areas, and definitely not near any water supplies. Leave space for major buildings, especially City Hall. Don't be boxing them in with roads too early. With City Hall, you need space to expand your departments of education, tourism, transport, etc. Same goes for when you build hospitals, police precincts, and schools. For hospitals, you need to add extra wings, police precincts, you add jail cells, and schools, you add extra classrooms, so you need that room. When it's time to upgrade certain utilities, sometimes it may be better adding new utilities instead of upgrading the existing ones, depending on the cost. In some instances, it might be cheaper to build another fire station rather than to add two or three more fire trucks to the existing station. It comes down to what the new upgrade costs per hour. Always be checking your road density or high traffic areas. If you have got traffic problems, look for ways of improving it by either adding more roads or intersections or even implementing a public transport system. Traffic is something you won't want to ignore. Traffic problems will increase response times for emergency services and also will attract less tourists. Roads can also be upgraded. Medium density streets can be upgraded to high density streets and medium density avenues can be upgraded to high density avenues. Although keep in mind, streets cannot be upgraded to avenue. Be sure to place plenty of parks in your city for this makes Sims happy and increases the land value. The more expensive the park or nature area, the wealthier the area gets. When placing utilities, a good order to follow is fire stations first, for fires tend to be the first disaster that will affect your city, then clinics, then police stations, then grade schools. Education is key. Personally, I recommend education should be the first department you place. The smarter your sims are, the easier things will be for you as mayor. Educated sims will cause less fires and are less likely to turn into a life of crime, so less stress on those two departments. Place your town hall near commercial buildings and your mayor's house or mayor's mansion in residential areas, for it increases the happiness and density of that zone. Don't be afraid of bonds, they can be really, really helpful. As long as you've got a steady hourly income, you'll pay them back. Always keep a close eye on your income and expenses report. If you see you're spending way too much money on something, do something about it. Don't just watch yourself lose money. Don't be afraid to raise taxes a little too. Playing with taxes can be tricky. Place them too high and people will protest and leave your city. Once you've built your current city to the extent and you've got no more room to expand, claim another city in your region and get to work. But keep in mind, your original city can support other cities in your region. You won't have to build everything over again. Power and water can be bought from your other city. Garbage trucks and police patrols, ambulances, fire trucks can also be borrowed from your other city to patrol your new city. Building airports and train stations in your new city will also allow your sims to travel between both cities. You can also share money between your two cities. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. If you did find this helpful, remember to smash that thumbs up button and uh, leave your thoughts on SimCity down below. Thanks for watching.